Okay, let's listen to the genius comedian Mitch Hedberg here. Quick clip. And by the way, for those of you outside the US, when he says pants, he means trousers. Take a look. I got a belt on that's holding up my pants, and my pants have belt loops that hold up my belt. I don't know what's really happening down there. <laughs> Who is the real hero? Okay, perfection. Mitch Hedberg, I think what he's talking about there is structural indeterminacy. Yeah, okay, I know, I know. But like most comedians who are excellent, he makes excellent observations about real life. So what's going on in his point that he's observed and made us laugh about is that it's rather odd when you don't quite know how something is behaving, when there's sort of unknowns and there are options which which way is the right way or what is actually going on. And a great way to sort of explain this is I'm going to use my pen here where I'm going to support this pen on just two supports, right? And with these two supports, maybe I'll do it like this, with these two supports the pen is fine. I can put a third support, if I've got the ability, there we go, I can put a third support and it's really unclear whether, uh, whether, um, God, stay still, whether the pen is being supported on this finger or this finger. You can see it as I move them around, but if they're both there, it's possible that it's on both or only one, and it's very hard to tell. That's because there's an extra support than the least number needed. If I put all of my fingers there, then of course that's quite significantly more, and we're not quite sure. It's, I feel the pen resting on my fingers, but I can also move them around ever so slightly and get it to be almost from something to nothing. And so we call this structural indeterminacy because there are more supports than the minimum needed. More formally, there's more unknowns than the equations to solve for it. And this is a very practical situation that we see all the time. A great example would be you're sitting at a cafe table, right? And in general, when you sit at one, they usually wobble a bit. And if you look underneath, that's because there are four legs on most cafe tables and you have to stuff some napkins underneath, right? So equally, when uh, you're talking about a beam that needs at least two supports, a plane, let's think. Here we go, a little bit of 3D printed glass. You don't have to use 3D printed glass for this, but I'm going to. A plane needs a minimum of three supports, right? I'm holding it on three of my one thumb, two fingers. Makes three supports total. And I could put a fourth support here, and that kind of works, but I don't need to have a fourth support. And that's why cafe tables wobble. It's why when you see people out with a camera or doing some measurements, they sit that camera or their measurement tool on a tripod, three legs, right? That is the minimum you need to hold something in three-dimensional space. So we also think about this, and more linked to uh, Mitch Hedberg's point that's, that's the belt in his trousers, where, for example, if we're hanging something, use my pen again, um, let's say it's a a facade panel piece up against a wall. And if you attach it on the bottom and the top, you sort of attach to the wall. If you run an analysis of this in a computer, it will say that half the weight is at the bottom and half the weight is on the top because you just sit it there and run the analysis. So everything seems perfect and gravity switches on. But the reality is, let's say when you're actually installing this, you sit the bottom down because that helps and then you pivot it and make the top connection. Oops. So if you did that, all the weight of this facade panel would be on the bottom connection. So double what your analysis would have told you from the computer analysis. And equally, you might have someone decide to, no, 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 I'm going to just hang it from the top and pivot the bottom down and make that connection. And then all of your load is at the top and none at the bottom vertically. So related to this, in terms of when you're in a situation where the loads could go through different options, it becomes quite important from a structural design point of view to think through that sequence, to do a couple of things. For example, you might provide a bolt connection at the top and slotted connections at the bottom, or vertically slotted, or vice versa. 
That way, it is clearly the case that when you put it into the normal size bolt holes, that that's where the load is going to go. And you're going to hope and or arrange in a way that the uh, connection to the slotted hole is somewhere in the middle. Uh, you can also, great idea, communicate with the people building it and discuss what the sequences of the build, what matters in terms of what can be designed for or has been designed for, so that the structure behaves in a way that you know it can work. It's a related theme, although not directly exactly the same to do with indeterminacy. But in many ways, when we don't know exactly what the load path is, as long as we can ensure that there is a valid load path, and in terms of strength and detailing, then that's one way the loads can work in the structure. They might find another path through the structure, but we've essentially ensured safety. And again, just to be clear, that is not exactly the same approach to structural design as I was talking about with indeterminacy, but these things are linked together as we think about how structures behave overall. So, key point here, be observant. Be very observant and think through what might be happening. If you're a bit confused, good, because maybe that's actually the kernel of a bit of observational truth, as all good humor is. A little bit of observational truth that's going to make you need to think through how you're analyzing it. Is your computer analysis results, are your computer analysis results uh, correct? Meaning they are technically correct, but do they physically make sense? And can you detail the connections to manage this properly? And are you in control of at least a valid load path through the system? And here, are structural engineering jokes that would have been better if Mitch Hedberg had said them. I knew a structural engineer who said he could use just three columns instead of four. I said, dude, I can do better than that. I can use one column. But it would be a tent. I just need some fabric or a poncho. I heard that the forces going through a structure are not always known. Seems to me like structural load paths are like ninja warriors or covert ops going through a structure. In that case, that means the beams and columns are their accomplices. <laughs> now, when I walk into a building, I am afraid of the beams and columns. I am saying, you stay back from me. If we don't know the structural load path through a structure, then that means a structure is a riddle wrapped in a mystery, wrapped in an enigma, held together with some bolts. Gravity sucks, man, but I have a solution. Helium. We just fill the buildings with that stuff. <laughs> it would be easier. Then, instead of having columns that hold the building up, we would just have cables to hold the building down. Also, all meetings would be hilarious. I would like to be in a building filled with helium. Why can we not make that happen? You know, my friend said that is an amusing observation. I said, you are right. You know another amusing thing that can beat gravity? He said, what? I said, levity. If you like this video or any of the videos that I've been doing recently about structures and material and form and design thinking, like and subscribe. See ya.